Hi everyone, welcome to Miss Adams Teaches, Romeo and Juliet. In this video, we are going to be having a look at Act 2, Scene 5, where the nurse returns to a very impatient Juliet to tell her the plans about her upcoming marriage to Romeo. Let's get started. So let's start with a plot summary, as always. The scene begins with lovely young Juliet. She's alone in her home and we get her first soliloquy. So she's alone on stage and it's um, a speech that is her direct thought. So it's a truthful representation of her thinking. And guess what she's thinking about? She's thinking about love. She's thinking about Romeo. But more specifically, she's thinking, why is it taking so long for the nurse to come back and tell me what Romeo said? This speech is all about the notion of time and why time needs to speed up and how slow the nurse is. It's a really lovely soliloquy because it's the first time that we sort of see Juliet in this sort of quite young and excited way. She's been very kind of straightforward and practical um, the whole way through so far. But now we kind of get to see her a little bit more like a, a teenager who's excited and impatient. And we also see the lovely relationship between the nurse and Juliet, because even though the nurse is teasing Juliet in this scene, kind of delaying telling her what Romeo said and kind of talking about irrelevant things like how her back hurts and and such it shows how comfortable they are with each other that Juliet feels comfortable and can kind of like gently chastise her and the nurse can tease her it's it's very very sweet um, and the end of the scene actually gives us what Juliet is asking for which is what's happening and it is in fact that you're going to go and get yourself married so that is the basis of the scene so let's start with Juliet's soliloquy Okay, the clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour, she promised to return. Perhaps she cannot meet him. Oh, that's not so. I've got lots of details to do with time, but it's the bare facts right now. So we know that Juliet sent the nurse off to speak to Juliet at nine in the morning. We know that she said it was only gonna take 30 minutes, but based on what's in the rest of the soliloqu soliloquy and a little hint that we were given in the previous scene, She's actually been gone for three hours, so you can see why Juliet is starting to get like frustrated. Oh, she is lame, she says. I love that exclamative. Um, it means slow here. It doesn't mean injured or, you know, it is. she's slow. But you can see like she's like, oh, hurry up. Love's heralds should be thoughts which ten times faster glide than the sun's beam beams driving back shadows over luring hills so again notice how we've got this imagery of light and dark again but coming from Juliet we're normally hearing it from Romeo but in this case when she talks about love's heralds lovely messenger there so the people sending the messages of love she's saying they should move faster than 10 times faster than light itself driving back shadows over luring hills. So she wants speed, but she also wants the idea of love illuminating the darkness and she wants it to hurry up. Um, so therefore do nimble pinioned doves, wind, uh, uh, wings, so little speedy, speedy wings, therefore do nimble pinioned doves draw love and therefore hath the wind swift Cupid wings. So she's saying, okay, so that's how Cupid gets around so quickly. It's because he has wings. Uh, now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey. Noon, yeah, so midday. And from nine till 12 is three long hours, yet she has not come. So we've got that repetition. We've still got that sense of frustration. Um, had she affections and warm youthful blood, so if she were young, she would be as swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me. So he's saying, right, she's saying, sorry. If she was young, she'd understand. She would be super speedy. Note the simile. I, and it's like the idea of a ball rolling down a hill. It would be like, Shoo. that's how she feels it should be. But instead, she thinks of the opposite of that, as seen in this juxtaposition. But old folks 
many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. So there's our little rhyming couplet because it's the end of the soliloquy. Um, we've got that juxtaposition as mentioned, so the speed of youth and then the slowness of the old, old folks. <laughs> so slow, in fact, through the hyperbole that she's like, they may as well be dead. Um, and we've got this lovely list of adjectives, unwieldy, slow and heavy. So all connoting sort of being very, very lumbersome. And then this simile and pale as lead. So again, this sort of notion of like heaviness and sickliness. So she's like, oh, God, they're so slow. Whereas she wants certainly the message of love to be delivered speedy and hastily. So I'm hoping that in your brain you're thinking mm, we've heard this stuff before, but in a slightly different way. And you'd be right. Fire Lawrence had an, a warning didn't he or some advice to give to Romeo and that was wisely and slow they stumble that run fast so at the moment you've got age and youth sort of misunderstanding each other or just having very different outlooks and very different perspectives but just as Juliet and Romeo are in this kind of massive um race and haste to get married you've got the friar offering this sober sober warning that is full of ominous foreshadowing they stumble that run fast so we're like juliet no slow down you're going to stumble then the nurse arrives she appears and this is like it's definitely a comedic scene here. All of the kind of um, delaying of the information that Juliet wants, all of the teasing. Um, and this is a lovely little moment where the nurse is speaking in prose. Um, as you can see, hopefully on the screen, it's not written in verse. And she's talking about Romeo. And she says, well, you have made a simple choice. Simple in this case means foolish. So she's actually saying, mm, I'm not sure. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo? No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his leg excels all men's, and for a hand and a foot and a body, though they were to be though they be not to be talked on, yet they are past compare. He is not the flat of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a gam. <laughs> What's a gam? <laughs> gentle as a lamb. Go thy ways when serve God. What have you dined at home? So She's being quite naughty here and um, basically saying, oh, he's not that great, but I'll give you that he's pretty nice to look at. And he lists um, all of kind of Romeo's body parts here, kind of complimenting them. And again, it might make you think, mm, have we heard this before? Because actually this really echoes Mercutio's lines when he's talking about Rosaline, when he talks about Rosaline's quivering thigh. Um, so you've got these two characters that are sort of both quite bawdy, both quite funny, um, but both of them really do view love through a very physical perspective. OK, granted, Mercutio's is more physical in terms of like pleasure, um, whereas the nurse is often talking about the physical um, effect of love, i.e. pregnancy. But I think here you are meant to see her and Mercutio as, as being as being quite similar. Um, and obviously it creates a nice bit of humour for us. And that humour is continued with the way that she delays the information that Julia is so desperate for. You can see how lovely the relationship is. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me what says my love. OK, so we've got a beautiful repetition of the adjective. We've got an imperative here followed by an interrogative, the nurse. By the way, some editions have this in prose and some in verse. So just whichever one your text is that you study. Your love says like an honest gentleman and a courteous and a kind and a handsome and I warrant a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why she is within? Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says like an honest gentleman. Where is your mother? So, oh, it's such a lovely little moment because the nurse is, you know, using these wonderful lists, 
listing all of the virtues of the kind of perfect gentleman that she's saying Romeo is in this moment and then interrupts with a total non sequitur. Where is your mother? And you can see again how frustrated Julia is because again, it's putting off, it's slowing things down. Whereas Julia is impatient, she wants haste. Um, and you know, the nurse sort of fakes, I suppose, um, being upset. Oh God, lady dear, are you so hot? Okay, eventually we do get to the um, we do get to the point of this moment where um, the nurse tells Julia what the plan is. Then hire you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make your wife. Now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. They'll be in scarlet straight at any news. So that is how we see Juliet's reaction. She's blushing. Like she's massively blushing and the nurse is like oh look at you you'll blush for anything hire you to church i must another way to fetch a ladder so that's what Romeo said at the end by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark so again back to the wedding night i am the drudge and toil in your delight but you shall bear the burden soon at night so she's like i'm putting in all of this work so that you can do this but you'll be the one putting in the work later yes very rude sexual innuendo once more but it's again it's this sort of physicality of love the nurse is always focused on the pregnancy the the act the sexual act as well the fact that she will grow bigger that she will have babies um that it's it's not the sort of transcendental love that romeo and juliet describe Okay, final thoughts. Again, age versus youth. It's 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 been here in the last few scenes, um, certainly. Um, and to go with that, the kind of concept of time. So impatience, haste. Um, we've got love, obviously, and marriage. And then this is obviously a brilliantly wonderful comedic scene, and we do need them um, in a scene in a play where we know that we are hurtling towards the death of two teenagers we do need the odd light moment so thank you very much to the nurse for providing it here and thank you as well from me to you thank you for watching um any questions do just drop me a line in the comments and i will respond to you if you haven't subscribed please do so and look out for more videos coming your way on romeo and juliet and all sorts of other things to help you with your studies happy revising